Hi beautiful ladies, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Alana Palm, Christian Trauma Release and Mind Renewal Specialist, and I help Christian women overcome overwhelm, fear, frustration, and trauma from a Christ-centered perspective. If this interests you, please continue watching. The topic this week I am so excited about because it's something that has been on my heart all week. I posed a question to the group and it looked like a lot of you have kind of maybe struggled with the same thing or <clears throat> at least had some experience with, you know, letting go and letting God, allowing him to have control because many of us want to hold on tightly to the things that we think we can control in our lives because we think it will bring safety and happiness. So I'm really excited to talk about this today. This is going to be a powerful topic. So yeah, and if you're watching the replay, just put in hashtag replay so that I know that you were watching that. And if you have any questions, feel free to post them. I am more than happy to answer any questions that you have either on the live here or afterwards. I would love your interaction. I would love to just have you interact with me through this process so that we can have a conversation because these lives are not just for me. They're for me to get to know you better and get to know your thoughts and feelings and just to share in this two-way conversation with you. So please say hi and please just post whatever your feelings and thoughts are as I'm talking because again, as I'm talking about these things, you might have a realization or you might just go, wow, you know, that's something I want to remember. So if you write it down and you type it in the comments, it's easier to remember. Today, we're going to talk about how to have more peace by letting go of control. So the first question I have for you is, when do you feel most at peace? When do you feel most at peace? So I would love for you to put this in the comments. When do you feel at peace? You know, what's going on in your life? Or where are you when you feel at peace? And I guess the extension question for that would be, where do you find peace when you're in the middle of a situation that you don't like? Where do you get that peace from? So when do you feel most at peace? Maybe it's lying on a beach. Maybe it is um, going to bed at night, praying. Maybe it's somewhere totally different. Maybe it's being with your grandkids, right? Whenever you're in the moment is usually when you're most at peace, right? So for those of you who don't know me, which I think most of you do, but if someone's watching this and they've just popped into this group for the first time and you're thinking, who is this girl? <laughs> my name is Alana Palm, and I help Christian women heal past pain and hurt, feel the Father's unconditional love, and basically pursue their God-given purpose with that love in them from the Father and for themselves. So if you've been in this group for any length of time, you'll know that you're not alone in some of your questions, in some of your pain. You'll know that there is a community of women that are very open and vulnerable about what they struggle with when it comes to the Lord, when it comes to life. Some of you did my five-day Experiencing God's Love Intensive the other week, which was wonderful. So, you know, we might put on a brave face, many of us. We might walk around like we have everything figured out, we have it all together, but... A lot of Christian women hide a lot of hurt underneath and they don't love themselves and they struggle to fully trust God. We had a lot of these conversations on our coaching calls for the client coaching calls that are in the Set Free Academy and many women struggle with trusting God fully, trusting his love, his protection and his provision. So the purpose of these Facebook lives every week and sometimes we do, it's in the middle of an intensive. Sometimes we have a guest speaker on like we did last week when we had Catherine Toon. So if you have a chance to watch that, I would encourage you to watch the replay. It was wonderful. She spoke so many words of love over you. So definitely watch that. But the purpose of these lives is to kind of uncover some of those real issues that many of us are experiencing as Christian women and ultimately draw us closer to God, draw us closer to who he wants us to be. And, you know, this title today, maybe you read this title and you went, oh yeah, I definitely need more peace in my life. Or maybe you saw it and you thought, yeah, I definitely control things a lot. I struggled to let go and let God. And some of you answered my question yesterday, actually, when I posted, why is it so hard to let go and let God? And I want to read you a few of the answers that I got um, that I was reading. So Simone wrote about how our whole lives have been about controlling everything we can, 
Kelly talked about the abuse that made her feel like she had no control. So she's tried to control things in her life. And I'll add to feel safe. We control things to feel safe. And now she's willing to face that head on and step into new territory to discover what's really going on and that God is her actual protection. God is her safety net. Stacy explained that when everything fell apart and she literally had no control, she threw her hands up and that's when things changed for the better. That's when she got more peace in her life, when she was willing to just let go. And Bonnie said that we get impatient waiting and we don't believe that God's going to take care of the situation. So we try to do it ourselves, which is so true, isn't it? And Barbara said that part of us thinks we can do it faster than God. And when we take the wheel, we can often make a mess of things. So true. And she also said something very profound. We have trust issues, which is where it's at. Absolutely. And that's really what it comes down to. When we don't have peace, it's because we're struggling with those trust issues with God. And we're going to talk about that some more. So if you feel this way, if you feel like you're lacking peace, if you feel like you're struggling to let go and let God because you want that control, know that you are not alone. Many women struggle with this. And I did last week. I mean, in all honesty, over the last several months, I have been feeling very peaceful. I've been practicing rest. I have been trusting God and resting in his character and his promises for my life. And it's been beautiful. I've seen him as my protection and my provision. And, you know, it's been such an amazing journey. I felt really good. I felt very grounded. I was, you know, abiding in him and doing that intensive. I felt just so much peace. But then this week that just passed, those last four days or so, I struggled with peace because something so silly came up and I wanted to control it. I wanted to have things turn out a certain way. I wanted it to look a certain way. And I struggled to let go and let God. And, you know, I recognized it because now I'm so aware of these patterns in my past and, and where, when they pop up that it gave me such a beautiful reminder of what I get to do when the enemy tries to steal my peace. And the simple answer is to focus on God, right? We all know, okay, if we want more peace, focus on God. But today I want to dive deeper into the how. How do we actually have that peace that surpasses all understanding? How? And that's from Philippians 4 verse 7, which is part of my uh, verse for the year, right? That peace that surpasses all understanding, which I think is what so many of us want, right? And because of because many of you will know when you don't have peace in your life, what happens? What happens for you? Before I answer it, what happens for you when you don't feel at peace? What kinds of things happen around you or inside you when you don't have peace? So I'd love for you to answer that question. You know, it, it really does affect us on that deep level. You know, choosing peace is a beautiful thing. But when we don't have peace, when we don't actually choose to have peace or choose to focus on God, it can really permeate into every area of our life and have a massive impact on how our day goes, right? So how do you have more peace by letting go and letting God, letting go of that control that you want over your life? So today I'm going to tell you about three ways to live out that fruit of the spirit of peace by letting go and letting God. Okay, so get ready. If you have a pen and a notepad, you're going to want to take some notes on this. So the first thing is to focus on his spirit. You need, you get to know, you need to know that God is always with you. He says, I am with you always until the end of the age in Matthew 28 verse 20. And you get to focus on him. In Isaiah 26 verse 3, it says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. God wants to keep us in perfect peace. When our mind is focused on him, he can do that because we're, we're aligned with him. So what happens? We are in the world. We live in this physical realm where we see everything around us. And this physical realm we live in is our focus a lot of the time because we see it, right? We're very visual. We look around, we see the things going on, we look at our bank account, we look at our friendships and relationships, and we see that these things aren't going the way we want, so it steals our peace, right? But God's, God provides sustainable peace for us when we abide in him, when we look to him, when we focus on his spirit. Instead of this physical realm, we focus on the unseen spiritual realm that is God, right? So where is your focus? So some real talk. Where do you focus? Do you focus on, I need to look a certain way. I 
you know, I'm going to my job, I need to show up a certain way. I want to have a certain amount of money or a certain amount of success or certain people around me. And if I don't have those things, then my peace is stolen from me. Right? The enemy wants to use those things that you want so desperately to steal your peace because when you don't have them, when I don't have them, <laughs> we often go to a place of, well, I don't, I don't feel at peace because I want that thing that I don't have. And whether that's a relationship or money or whatever it may be, we are all in a position at some point where we kind of idolize something as, you know, we want this. And if we have this, we feel good. If we don't have this, then we don't feel good. Right? And it basically steals our peace. And these are soul ties that we have to these things. We have soul ties to relationships. We have soul ties to money. We have soul ties to things. We think these things are giving us something that we need. We think they're protecting us, providing for us, keeping us safe. We create this idea in our mind, right? It's this construct we live in. Like if we figure this all out, if we control all these things, then we will feel good. We will feel at peace. We will have joy. But it's simply not true because as soon as that thing is gone, then where do, where's our peace, right? We're looking for the next thing. Whereas God gives sustainable peace that we can always have. So peace does not come from outside circumstances, right? It, it's a shift in perspective. It's a shift in perspective from this physical realm we live in to God's spirit, to the invisible, to what we cannot see. And it really is just a shift in the way we view things. Instead of looking here, we're looking up, right? And we're bringing heaven down to earth. We're bringing his spirit down to earth, right? And so this brings me to number two. Number two, the second thing is to know that peace is actually a mindset. Right, so peace is a mindset. So here's the thing. We talk about being in prison. We think people who are in prison behind bars are, you know, in this area where they don't have freedom. Although many of us live in prison without having those physical bars around us. You know, Paul was in prison and he talked about it not being about the bars or circumstances. The fact that we can have an internal prison. We can be in this situation where we don't feel free because we've put bars around us, right? We've made this self-made prison cell that we live in. We don't have that freedom because we don't have peace. People who are in prison, right? And I, I know, you know, I've watched these different people do prison ministry and people who are in prison having this freedom that people outside in the free world don't have even an ounce of because they've chosen peace. They've chosen to focus their mindset on God, right? So. You can say a few things. So you can say, you know, Lord, I know you're right here with me in this. You know, that's a little bit of a shift in your mindset. You can say what I often say to myself, which is, this is how it is, and this is where my peace is. So little things like that, like a line that you can say to yourself to, to remind yourself of the peace that comes from God. Step two is to know that peace is a mindset. It's a way that we think. Jesus is in you right? You were born of him. He's in you. He's present with you all the time. You're never alone. So just regularly stop and remind yourself of that. You're never alone. You feel alone sometimes, but your feelings come from your thoughts. So think about what, do you, what am I thinking? Am I thinking about God or am I thinking about this circumstance that I don't like that's not giving me peace? Sometimes it really just comes down to being still with him. So I posted a little um, picture today about being still be still and know that I am God from Psalm 46.10. And really, it comes from being still. So here's another question for you. How many of you have had 20 minutes of stillness with God this last week where you just sat in his presence with nothing else going on, not distracted by anything? You just sat there or lay there with your eyes closed and just listened and talked to God, like really, really focused on that. Now, some of you might do that, which is wonderful. And... Now, I think I always have a conversation with God, but how often do I actually just sit there in the stillness? When I'm going to bed at night, I do. I, I will kind of think about him as I'm going to sleep and pray and all of those things. But do I consciously sit there during, you know, in the middle of the day and go, okay, I'm going to spend the next 20 minutes with God, like real quality time. I get to work on that. I get to do that more. Right? And maybe maybe you do too. Maybe maybe you want to work on being still with him because that has a huge impact on your ability to feel peace because our inability to sit still often creates stress. 
because we want to do, 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 go, go, go. And that can create stress in our lives. So just remember, it's not about circumstances around you, right? We often focus on those circumstances, but it's not about that. It's about what's going on inside our heart and our mind and our soul. And when the storms come, what do we do? Do we look at Jesus? Right? So like, let's talk about the story of Peter walking on the water. So in Matthew 14, 29 to 31, it talks about this. And come, Jesus says, right? He says, come to Peter. So Peter got down out of the boat. He walked on the water and came towards Jesus, which was a miracle, right? But what did he do? What did Peter do as he was walking toward Jesus? He was focused on him. Everything was good. He was walking on water. Miracles were happening. What did he do? He looked around at the wind and the waves, his perspective, his focus, his mindset changed. And instead of thinking and focusing on God, he was focusing on the circumstances around him, the wind and the waves, right? You know, he says, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus reached out and caught him. And he said, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? And that's kind of what we do, right? Instead of looking at Jesus and trusting him that he's going to allow us to walk on water, we doubt, we look at the circumstances. So what does this tell you? So Peter focused on the wind and the waves and what happened? What happened? What does God want us to do? This is something that you can answer. What does God want you to do? What happens when you look around you at the circumstances, at the wind and the waves? What happens inside you? Do you feel peace? But what happens inside you when you look at Jesus? What's possible? That peace that surpasses all understanding, that miracle peace that he gives us, right? So remind yourself in your mind and in your heart of his love and power. You're facing every crisis with Jesus's help, with Jesus in you. And when you believe that, your peace increases. Okay, so we're going to get to number three, the last one. So the third way that you can let go and let God and stop trying to control everything in your life is to uncover where you're not believing God. Uncover where you are not believing God. So we all think that we believe God, right? Oh yeah, I trust the Lord. I know he wants the best for me. We say those things, but this is a really big one. And much of our peace is stolen because we actually don't fully believe him. We think we do, but we don't. So let me ask you a few questions to reflect on if you're trying to control things in your life and therefore you're kind of losing out on his perfect peace. I want you to answer some of these questions. So the first one, ready? Where do you have accusations against God? Where do you have accusations against God? Accusations of, you're not giving me what I want. Where are you, God, when this is all going on in my life? Why are you giving me these circumstances? You know, I thought you were a good God. And we question his character. We accuse him of things that are not of his character. So where are you holding accusations against God? So that's the first question. The second one, where are you not trusting him? Where are you afraid? Remember, fear is not of God. So where are you afraid and going, I don't fully trust you, God, so I've got to take this into my own hands because I don't trust that you're going to work it out. I mean, maybe you're kind of thinking along some lines of working it out, but I know I can help you with that, God. So I'm going to make sure that I sort of mold some things in the way I think they should go. But where are you not trusting him to work it out? Where are you trying to force something or press an issue on something without just letting go and saying, I trust you, God, I trust you. I know you're going to work this out for my good. I know you're going to work out good in every circumstance in my life. I know this is here for a reason. The next question, where do you think that you can do better than God? In what areas of your life do you think, well, I can do better than God? Right? And maybe this isn't even conscious. But subconsciously, you're like, well, I'm, I'm going to control this. I'm going to, I'm going to hold on to this because I can do better than God. Right? And we're not thinking that, but we're feeling it. Because that's where our motivation is coming from. So where in your life, and you, you can journal about these questions, put your answers in the comments, where do you think you can do better than God? So the next question is, why do you feel you need to have control? Why do you feel that you need to have control? How does that make you feel safe? How does having control make you feel safe? Why do you feel like you need it? So... I know historically that I felt like I needed to have control because 
I thought if I can manipulate, not in a manipulative way, but if I can manipulate things in my life and put them all in a certain way so that they all work out, then I'm going to feel good. But there's all this other stuff going on around me that I can't control. So it's like there's there's a section. If we look at it as two halves, half of this, you know, say box is, you know, what I can control. And the other half is empty because it's all about God's control and the way he's working everything together. If I just think about my little side here, kind of that myopic view, I'm not really letting God do what he does. So it's actually about, okay, I know I can control certain things. I can control the way I show up, what I think, what I feel. I can control how I interact with people, how often I pray, how often I read my Bible. But then there's this whole other section that God controls completely. So we can make those choices, but then we leave the rest up to him. So how, where do you, why do you feel like you need to have control? How does that make you feel safe? So... Yeah, you put up a bar. Maybe you meant like a wall type of thing, like a bar or a wall so you won't get hurt. Yeah, I used to do that. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I built a fortress around me thinking I will never get hurt by anybody if I just don't feel anything. I will just, I will just protect myself. No one will penetrate that. And, oh, my goodness, that was just, it was the best thing I could do at the time because it made me feel safe. But it resulted in a lot of broken relationships. And eventually I learned how to let that wall down and be vulnerable and open and honest, authentic, right? So that I didn't need to put that facade up anymore. I didn't need to have that wall up anymore. And that was huge for me. And that's one of the things I teach women now is how to bring that wall down safely to know <laughs> you're so strong in your identity and worth in Christ that nothing will affect you on that level because you're so, you've built your life on a firm foundation of rock instead of sand. So nothing will crumble underneath you when people come in and hurt you because you're, you're on that firm foundation, which is where I'm at now, but I wasn't there before. You know, five, 10 years ago, I had built my foundation on sand. It's always crumbling. If somebody thought something about me or did something to me, it ruined my self-esteem because I didn't have enough self-esteem to withstand those things. But once I did, and once I found my identity and worth in Christ, I was able to let those walls down. Now, I mean, people could hurt me the same that they did then or worse, and it doesn't even bother me because I don't need their approval. I don't need to protect myself from them because my provision and my protection come from God. And I know that's kind of a simple way of saying something that's very profound. It took me years to you know, get through and understand that. But now that's what I coach women on because God gave me an amazing opportunity to overcome that, putting up walls to protect myself and knowing that he's my protection. So it's powerful. So um, the next one, uh, this is actually the last question to reflect on for this section. Where did you not have control in your past? So some of you have talked a little bit about this, about you know, in my past, I was abused and I didn't have control. In my past, I was hurt and I didn't have control. So where did you not have control in your past? Because often that will impact your desire for control now because you want to control things now because you couldn't then. So if you can now, then you'll feel safe because you didn't feel safe back then. So, and again, I'm guilty of this. I did this for years because of my abuse when I was young and wanting to be loved and afraid that people weren't going to love me or like me or that they were going to hurt me. So I didn't have that control back then to stop what was happening to me. I couldn't run away. I couldn't control it. I couldn't do anything about it. So I ended up um, controlling everything when I grew up. It made me feel safe, right? So those are the questions. If you want to go back and watch this again and actually look at those questions again and, and do some journaling on them, you can private message me if you want and just send me your answers. I would love to hear what you came up with for your answers and what, what you're struggling with. See if I can help you. I would love to help you if that's something that you desire in your life is to walk with someone who can help you with some of these things. And just remember, you can always ask God to help you see that he is your protection and your provision. You can read scripture. You can just basically focus on his character, his promises, believing those things. Believing that what he says is true, his promises are true, his character is good, that he is always protecting and providing for you. And that's really what it comes down to, is how you can rest in him. Just remember that worrying and fear, they destroy peace. 
and those are not from God, they're from the enemy. So only you can tell, is the enemy pouring thoughts into me right now or is God? Am I focused on the enemy's truth or God's truth? Right, because the enemy believes very strongly in his truth. <laughs> I think he's even deceived himself, right? He's just the author of deception, right? He wants to deceive us into thinking things. God is truth, right? There's no deception with God. So think about that. And again, if you struggle with letting go and letting God because you really desire to have control over your life, I want you to know that's exactly what I work with my clients on, among many other things, right? Because there's so many layers to how we show up in life. Getting to the root of why these things are going on and releasing them to him is really what helps you heal, helps you move forward, helps you live a different life because you're pers perspective shifts, you've healed what's going on inside, you don't need to have those walls up anymore, you feel safe. So all of those things are available to you. And if you want some guidance and help with that, feel free to reach out to me or send your answers my way or post in the comments if you're watching the replay. Just post, you know, your thoughts about what came up for you, your answers to your questions that I asked. I would love to see all of that. I would just encourage you to find the song. It's called Peace. You should find a post um, close to where this video is. It's called Peace. And it's just a beautiful song on God's peace that surpasses all understanding. It blessed me beyond belief. I've been singing it all week and just am in love with it. So I would, I would encourage you to just find a comfortable spot, close your eyes, put the song on, and just let it wash over you. Just spend five, six minutes and allow God's truth to wash over you today. And that's my blessing for you today. I was going to sing it for you, but I thought, no, you know what? The real version is <laughs> has definitely got um, a leg up on my singing. So I want it to bless you. One day, one day I'll sing for you. <laughs> one day. Um, so... Thanks again for tuning in. Thanks for being with me this morning. And I look forward to reading your comments after the live. And I look forward to being with you again soon. And remember, just reach out to me if you have any thoughts or questions or anything you want to unpack. I am here for you. All right. Have a wonderful day. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you for watching. If you connected with this content and it helped you in some way, please like, subscribe, and share this video. Also, check the description below for special gifts just for you. See you in the next video.